We have plenty of time for questions. If anyone would like to ask of any of our wonderful panelists, the floor is yours. At the back, is that Catherine? Oh, oh. yep. My myopia is going to compromise me here. Um, thank you all to the presenters, really interesting presentations and great, I think, to see um, you all showcase, I think, an awful lot of the hidden work that is done to support the services delivered to our users. Can I ask you all maybe to share maybe one lesson that you have learned from the process that you would um, give as a piece of advice to somebody else undertaking a similar project? From my own perspective, I would say plan and plan and plan again. Because if you think you get things right the first day, you, something will happen the second day that may throw you off curve. So systems may not run smoothly from the start and be prepared for that. Um, I would just say the planning was invaluable and we've learned that for any future projects we will engage in, we'll have to bear that in mind. I suppose from our, from our point of view, um, I, I would say that don't be scared um, is the other thing. We, we spent the last, um, certainly since I've been in the library, avoiding doing any kind of full um, stock check on the collections. It was always just too big a job, too difficult, too many problems with it, not the right time. And when we were forced to do it, and we said, we'll have it done in six months, we did get it done in six months, and nobody believed that we would, because we, we knew that it just, a bit like the others were saying, it just has to be done in that time. Um, so that's what I would say, don't, don't worry about it. Overly. Um, what I'd say as well, in, in, on a follow on about the about planning as well, is that um, you have to be prepared as well to do little little tweaks on, on what you think is going to work, because when you put it into practice, there's always something that has to be slightly adjusted as well. When you when you get into it, um, just the, the whole physical logistics of moving <coughs> items and organising them and trying to, we've been labelling shelves and trolleying material from here to there to everywhere, but it's been, it's been a great exercise. It's keeping us all very fit. <laughs> um, I would say um, preparation is key. I think just not, you know, just ex ex expect the unexpected um, and just know how important even the minimum, the minimal details are and just as I was saying there, things like the template and the stickers for our project, they were such a huge part of our project and had your procedures written out clearly. Um, so there's you know, no going back and saying, oh, I didn't know about that. It's there for everyone to, to see clearly. And also know that timescales don't necessarily stick to what they say they will. <laughs> things can run on. <laughs> I think I probably... Um one of the things in systems department is that often you're, um, you're out there on your own. And I think the projects that we've been working on recently, it shows that all the departments can work together. And um, it doesn't actually matter what department you work in because we've got this project and it needs to be done. So let's forget that, you know, I work in systems and Mary works in cataloging and acquisitions. And people who worked on the, the actual project, they came from the information desk, they came from the issue desk. That, but we were all just working together to get this done. Cool. Thank you. Are there any other questions before we go? Okay. Yo, oh, sorry, yes? Do you, want to, do you want to wait for a microphone? There we go. Sorry. I was just wondering if you didn't you need to use the Dewey number, how did you decide what went together into the boxes? So um, one thing I didn't explain actually in the slides is that the bins are stored in a random system. Now we do also have the option of choosing dedicated storage and we have done that for something like our Jim Kemi collection. But when you're putting the items into the bin and you're retrieving them from the bin, they're not, they're not being retrieved via Dewey, they're being retrieved by their author and title which is stored in under their barcode. So it's literally the barcode is the all important, and that's why everything has to have a barcode that's going into the storage. So if you select a bin from one, select a book from one bin, and it had a orange label on it, when the book is returned, you're basically calling back an orange bin that has space in it to just put, pop that book in. With the case like the Jim Kemi, it'll come out of the bin and it'll go back in the same exactly the same bin. 
Okay, at the back, the Joanna. And this may need to be our last question, depending on time. So make it a good one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, one for colleagues in uh, DCU and the project of joining the two libraries, an absolutely enormous task, um, obviously. Um, could you give a sense, uh, particularly as we're talking about, oh, it's not these projects bring the library together, it's not just systems, it's not just collections. Could you talk about if you have any sense of how your users understood what had happened in terms of the collections uh, and when they were kind of manoeuvring in libraries that they wouldn't have necessarily uh, manoeuvred? What sort of feedback or kind of anecdotally, how do you feel that, that that kind of resonated with them? Did they care? Did they notice kind of a thing? I think a lot of it um, went unnoticed, but um, I think after years of um, the St. Pat's students wanting to borrow from DCU and the DCU wanting to borrow from St. Pat's when we were separate um, libraries but on the same database, um, when they were told that they could use, that they could go to any um, library on either campus and actually borrow books, um, they were delighted as far as I, I know. Anything else? Yeah, I would actually say they did notice because um, we, could, we know that the request collection is being used. So from my point of view, they were aware of that this um, collection was coming on to the catalogue, they were using the catalogue, they were going to the desks and they were talking to our users and I think from my perspective it's interesting that what we categorise as low use may not always be low use. Sometimes it might be no use and we might have to get rid of it and uh, uh, as other people have said sometimes if it's low use it might revolve into high use so I do think it was a transitional time we're still in a state of transition we're still incorporating and I think the users mightn't have been aware of the stress that might have gone on behind the scenes but I think they are aware of the impact of the request collection on the library catalogue and that they can borrow the books as well Great, congratulations, thank you Okay, if there are no further questions Cast an eye around. Um, okay, I will just remind you. Sorry? Okay, can we get the microphone to Avril, please? Sorry. And this will be the last one, I'm afraid. Just a question for Limerick. Did they RFID the material that was going into ARC or? No, I mean, it would, it would have been, most of it's RFID'd. Anyway, it's already RFID, yeah, but we didn't need to RFID it for the ARC. No. Okay. Thank you. Ah, okay. Um, so, if I can, just to conclude, remind you that the poster viewing is happening imminently. Also, encourage you to go and interact with our many wonderful sponsors and vendors. And then, finally, if I can, most importantly, ask you to show your appreciation for these three tremendous talks, which are really illuminating. Thanks, guys.